What's up, everyone? It's Nurse Blake, and welcome back to the Nurse Blake Podcast. This is episode seven, and this podcast is titled You're Just a Nurse. And I'm here with my husband, Brett with two T's. Hey, everybody. Um, you are married to just a nurse. Just an, I mean, when people say, oh, oh, that's nice. You're married. What does your husband do? I say, oh, he's just a nurse. Ah! No, he doesn't. Ah, I cannot with I'm that. I'm kidding. Of course I don't. I've been That's nurse- awful. Awful. I have heard that before, and it is just like nails on a chalkboard. It's like, excuse you? Calling me just a nurse. That happens, though. People are like, oh, you're just a nurse. Oh, I know. Yeah, I've heard that before. It's yeah. And I don't think they know what you do. Yeah, I think a lot of people don't. They think they know what nurses do, but they don't really know what nurses do. So that's what this episode is all about. We're going to talk about what nurses actually do, the different roles that nurses have. And yeah, I'm super excited about this episode to dive in. But before we get into it, we have got to talk about the oat milk shortage. Drama. Around the country, around the world. I, my favorite drink, my newest favorite drink, which you all know is the ice shaken brown sugar oat milk espresso. And they have either been out of brown sugar or oat milk. Ridiculous. And they just launched it, right? It just came out. Like, I thought it was going to be a drink that was going to be around... So what had happened was I went to, I have two Starbucks by my house. I like them both. Everyone that works there is really nice. Um, Their lines are always so long, but that is okay. Starbucks lines, what? Everyone. Is it? Like, if you pull into Starbucks, you know you're going to be in line 15 minutes. I one time read that that's like part of their marketing. Like, they they kind of service people slow so that there's always a line. So it's like, ooh, I want to go there. Really? Yeah. We are. Uh, there's some secret sauce there. I don't know. Interesting, because like uh, Burger King, they never have a line. No. <laughs> they ne- <laughs> do, but do you go into Burger King? No. Maybe that's why. <laughs> Maybe you're that's a McDonald's person. I'm a McDonald's person. He I loves love their breakfast. Their breakfast. Mm. So back to Starbucks. So I went to um, Starbucks A, which is closer to my house, and they were out of oat milk, but they had brown sugar. After I waited in line 15 minutes, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm going to go to Starbucks B, which is on the other side of town. They had brown sugar, but they were out of oat milk. So then they had made it with uh, almond milk, which we know I don't like almond milk. Um, So I didn't end up getting my... So didn't Starbucks just do this big partnership with Oatly? I'm shocked know. that they're out of it all the time. Yeah. Because we've been now to a bunch of Starbucks, and every time they're, they seem to be out of the oat, oat milk. milk. And they're like, oh, would you like almond milk or would you like soy milk? It was not and you're like, the no, same. I want my oat milk. It was not the same. So I ended up getting a drink, and I think it was the one without brown sugar because they had gotten both. And it was okay. It was fine. But halfway through my beverage experience... I find a hair. And I thought it was on the exterior of the cup. So I'm like, oh, that's a hair. Trying to remove it off the cup. (laughs) And no, it was on the inside of my drink. Trapped between the ice and the wall Uh, of the cup. Listen, I'm a nurse. I have seen it all. I have done it all. I have smelt it all. Nothing grosses us out. Poop, sputum, everything. We could handle it. We can take. Um, but hair, I don't know what it is about hair when it's off the body. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it. everybody loves hair when it's on Yeah, you're like, oh my head. gosh, I love your hair. It's so pretty. It looks so Beautiful. soft. But then if there's just a hair, not just like in food, like if it's in food and a drink, like gross. But even if it's like on the table somewhere, the moment it detaches from someone's body, it's, it's different. The worst thing it's, ever. Why is that? <laughs> like so it just weird. becomes dirty when it falls off your body, and you're just like, oh, like oh, whose hair is this? Or like cleaning out the shower and there's hair. You're like, oh. well, especially like at our house one time, I found yeah. a long hair. Where are they getting the long hair from? I don't know. Previous homeowner. <laughs> I guess. Previous homeowner. Freaked me out. 
a long hair? Yeah. Like, how did it get there? Maybe through one of our Starbucks cups or something. It must Maybe. have got into the house. Maybe. <laughs> Freaking hair. I don't know what it is. So I had to do what I never thought I would do. I had to go through Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> Good news, though. They had oat milk. Really? It was good it was cheaper cool by like half the price and it worked it got me through my day i hear at duncan though you get some kind of different every time yeah so that's like the thing like the consistency isn't the same it's like a surprise some people say they only go to duncan for iced beverages which iced coffees at duncan they do hit different they're like you know <laughs> really really good and you know being gay we just drink iced beverages, like that, an iced coffee. That's like the thing. Oh, I didn't know that was a gay thing. Oh, wait, oh my gosh. Iced oh my coffee? God. Well, I love iced tea, so that totally makes that sense. That makes sense. That, that, Obviously. That's how you know. Okay. Like that, if you see someone like a new nurse like that comes in with the iced coffee, you're like, how are you? Like, <laughs> <laughs> I love that you connected those You should those join the LGBT the Q plus committee at the committee. hospital. <laughs> you drink iced coffee. No, but someone did say, yeah, I do. Um, iced coffees at uh, Dunkin' and then just like hot coffees at Starbucks and stuff. That makes sense. Yeah. Love it. I am so sorry about your experience. I know. It's okay. I went back to Starbucks today and they were like, oh, so I went to like Starbucks a or whatever and they're like was that hair from our starbucks and i was like no it's no. from the other one you did post it on insta you kind of threw they starbucks saw it. Like, they saw it maybe they'll sponsor uh, our podcast somebody should sponsor we're well, look podcast. we're drinking out of our starbucks cups right now that's right i love reusable it. too i love it this one's really pretty but i think it's easter themed oh. um so i want to talk about my new my new kitchen appliance the tavala Yes, another kitchen appliance. So I ordered a new kitchen appliance, and Brett was like, what did you do? I was like, I bought something new. New kitchen appliance. And it's huge, too. Just like the air fryer was big, this uh -huh. thing is actually bigger. Yeah, I love it. So what a Tavala is, it is a oven? Yeah, it's, it's, like, oven? A, it's like a toaster oven. On steroids. Slash microwave, but it's not microwave. Yeah, and it steams, so you add water to it. Which is the best part. Which is the best part. And you can get it for like under $200. And what's awesome about the Tavala, it is also like a meal service. So you order different Tavala meals online and they come packaged, all the raw ingredients, but like everything separated really easily. And what you do is you put your meal in the Tavala and it comes with a scanner. So the the Tavala actually scans the ingredients or the meal you have, and it cooks it at the right temperature in the right time. Most meals just take 20 minutes, but it is the best ever. It, it is. So unlike most of like the meal prep, it takes like a minute to basically yeah. put this together, stick it in this oven thing, scan it, and it's done. It's done. And it's amazing. And we've had purple. We've had HelloFresh. We've tried all, all of those. Them. But we don't cook. We do not like cooking. Yeah, don't. Yeah, I don't want to prep something. Like, no. don't just send me raw ingredients and tell me I'm a chef. I think the first time we um, signed up for Purple Carrot, we'll be like, "This is so cute. We'll be able to cook together." And then it's like, "Oh my gosh, it takes oh forever." God. Yeah, it took a while. And, but this is like Blake's new weekly thing. I think we're going to start doing my favorite weekly thing every week for the podcast. So I will share with you my new weekly favorite thing. Well, it could be anything. It literally, yeah, it, it is something different every yeah. week. I love it. That'll <laughs> I be love a fun it. That'll segment. be fun. But what's so great about the Tavala is it cooks in like 20 minutes. It's amazing. Um, but for like families and stuff, you can only really put one meal at a time. That's the biggest downside. And I'm yeah. really surprised that, I mean, they're really big portions, yeah, which is huge. awesome. But yeah, you can only cook one meal at a time and it takes like 15 to 20 minutes. So like the two, we don't actually eat, eat at the same time for Tavala, which is strange. And it's not something that you could like take to work because there would have to be a Tavala oven. Oh, <gasps> hospital should get Tavala ovens in the break room. That would be amazing. And then you just take your meal and then 20 minutes. <laughs> just kidding. It, like nurses get like oh, a full lunch. So that's right. like a joke. To, to like, yeah, but you can like have a Tavala and have your meal and then just eat graham crackers and peanut butter and jelly. Yeah, it really is like the best 
food thing Delicious. we've ever done at the house. Wait, is Brett saying he loves my new kitchen appliance? Fine. I mean, when you first told me about it, I'm like, oh my. And I think it was like your cousin or somebody cousin who told, who told about you it. about it. And, yeah. and you were kind of joking. It was like an MLM thing. Cause you're like, yeah, now I'm like downline from her. Or blah, blah, blah. <laughs> you were just kidding. But um, I was like, oh my gosh, here we go again. Another appliance on our kitchen counter, but yep. it's totally worth it. I love it. I'm glad you love it. <laughs> Screw the air fryer. I use the Tavala now. I already threw it out. <laughs> Stop. I'm kidding. I do like, I will use it again. When? Stop. I'm going to make maybe cheese sticks or something <laughs> for in the air fryer. <laughs> yeah, for Thanksgiving I'll be making I'll be making <laughs> So, to our episode you're just a nurse. I hate that phrase. I want to know from you as someone who doesn't work in healthcare, but you've been with me. I've been a nurse for 7 years. Um as you know, there's so many different roles in nursing, but looking at the hospital setting, which most nurses work, I think it's like over 50% of nurses work uh, in a hospital setting, um, 12-hour shifts, what do you think a nurse does? Well, yeah, I guess I'm I'm not quite the, the normal demographic because I've been married to you for so long, but I would say that uh, a nurse typically um, dispenses medications, mm-hmm. um, monitors vitals, and makes sure that all the equipment that monitors vitals is hooked up. Mm-hmm. I would say they make sure the patient is comfortable and well taken care of. That's kind of a broad uh-huh. term. Um and make sure that the doctor comes by every once in a while. You can just say know. we do everything. <laughs> Nurses do everything. do everything. Nurses you do everything. Literally do everything. So um, the whole healthcare team, you know, is able to, you know, works together to care for a patient. But the nurse is with the patient most of the time. We are with patients for 12 hours. So we really are doing everything from assessing the patient, uh, coming up with, you know, a nursing diagnosis for the patient, setting up care plans and outcomes and goals, you know, implementing whatever plan that is, and then evaluating, seeing how that works. So a lot of people say, you just do what the doctors tell you to do. Well, the doctors do put in the orders, but there are a lot of standing orders or nursing orders that, you know, nurses can go ahead and implement. Uh, We do give medications, but we could also titrate medication. So let's say a doctor orders a certain medication uh, that's a drip you know, it's going through an IV. Uh, The doctor doesn't have to tell us, you know, um, that we need to adjust it. We could look based off the patient's condition, um, vital signs, whatever we're trying to monitor. And based on the order, it allows us to titrate medication. So a lot of times we're making that call based on the patient's condition and vitals, you know, going up on a drip, going down on a drip. Um, We are monitoring everything. So if there's ever a change in a patient's condition, you know, the nurse is the first one that's typically able to see that to notify the doctor. And and a lot of people think that we, you know, call the doctor and they just tell us what to do. But a lot of times nurses are the ones providing the recommendation, you know, to the doctor or that, you know, provider or practitioner. Because now there's a lot of PAs, physician's assistants and nurse practitioners on the floor that, you know, we're also calling. So in addition to the doctors, we also have PAs and MPs, you know, there too, because they're also, you know, uh, prescribers and stuff um, that could be, you know, um, manage the care for that patient with the nurse. But we're pretty much doing everything. So once you get on the floor, you get your breakfast biscuit, you go clock in, say hi to your team, get your assignment. Um, depending on what your ratios are, if you're in ICU, it could be two patients, one patient, if it's really high acuity, or on the med surge floors, you know, you have a lot of patients. You could have up to eight patients. And if it's at night, it's, you know, 10 to 12 patients. And then you're going, giving medications, you're assessing, you're getting them ready for procedures, doing procedures, uh, and making sure they're taken care of. So a lot of people say, you know, we don't just clean poop. We do do more than clean poop, but that is a part of the job. You know, it's our job to make sure that the patient is comfortable, that they um, are safe. That's a big thing to make sure patients are safe when we're, when they are in our care and really whatever they need. Um, (laughs) It's funny because a lot of times people uh, think when you come to the hospital, you're coming to a hotel, like this (laughs) five-star resort, um, you know, 
um, with a nurse doing everything that, you know, you want them to do. But a lot of times we are busy, you know, caring for patients. People say, get us a water, get us apple juice, get us ginger. Of course, we will do that because we want you happy and comfortable. But sometimes we're in the next room over, you know, doing a code blue, you know, giving chest compressions on a patient. So patients have different needs and it's our job to prioritize the needs of all our patients. You know, so if you have two patients, one is in a rapid response or in a code and the other patient, you know, needs a warm blanket, we have to prioritize, you know, the care for all our patients. So we're going to go sense. help and assist in that code. And then once we get the chance, if there are any warm blankets left and no cold nurses, take <laughs> the warm blankets from the blanket warmer. We will go and, you know, get that patient a hot warm blanket. That's nice. That's what we do. Yeah. No, I love it. I think that there's not enough education to the public uh, in, in terms of like what a nurse's role is. I think everyone knows that a nurse's role is to care for the patient, yep. like in general, but I think really diving, like I was so amazed at how in-depth and difficult nursing school was. Yeah. I had no idea. You know, I mean, I, I knew that there was additional schooling to become a nurse, but I didn't realize how involved it was as a layman. It was, it was um, a real surprise to me. So I, I would love to see additional you know, outreach to the, to the general public to, to make sure that you guys get as the appreciation that you really deserve. Yeah, totally. I think, uh, you know, COVID has definitely brought to the surface what nurses do and, you know, now healthcare heroes, heroes, but still a lot of people don't know the education nurses have and what skills, um, they have to be, be able to provide care. A lot of people trust us. We are the most trusted profession, and we've been that way, you know, over 17 years now, which is something I'm really, really proud of. But like you said, not a lot of the layman or the public really know what nurses do. And TV shows do not give nurses justice or any credit. It's always, oh my gosh, whether it's Grey's Anatomy or The Good Doctor. There's like no, there's like one nurse there and doctors are doing everything. Right, of course. Ambulating your patient, putting in an IV. Fluffing their pillow. Getting a blood pressure. <laughs> <laughs> it's typically, you know, the nurse that's doing all that work. Doctors do a lot. I've, in my nursing career, been able to work in so many different roles. And the role of, you know, doctor, nurse, practitioner, PA, it's very different, you know, than what a bedside or staff nurse does. Um, and a lot of times doctors don't get credit for the work they do, just like nurses don't get credit for the work we do. And our jobs are very different, but they are both essential and they care for that patient, no matter what your role is in the hospital, from EVS to housekeeping, to dietary, to PT, OT, speech, social work, nursing, um, doctor, MP, PA, we are all there to care for the patient at the end of the day. And it takes all of us, you know, serving in our respective roles to be able to do that. Yeah. And there's so many jobs in nursing. I know we talked about the role of the nurse, you know, in the hospital setting, working 12 hours, whether that's day shift or night shift. But there are also so many other roles that nurses have, you know, within the hospital. OR, so much fun. Uh, it would actually be really cool to be an OR nurse, I think. They get to listen. I love listening to music. And a lot of times, uh, depending on who the surgeon is, they'll play music. Oh, fun. In the OR. What kind of music? anything. Sometimes it's like the surgeon's preference, right. which we totally get that. But sometimes they, you know, allow the, the staff and the, fun. the nurses. I wasn't a nurse in the OR. I was a surgical assistant. So right. I didn't get to experience that on, you know, on the nurse side, but it definitely is a really cool role. That's cool. It's just high stress. And you talked all the time about not having to do your hair. I had a really bad hair day today, and I hope you're not watching this on YouTube because you'd see my bad hair day today. But yeah, that's really cool in the OR because you just get to wear a surgical cap. Heck yeah. And then you have, you know, social work and care coordinators. I got to work as a care coordinator at a level one trauma center. So it was my role to assess the patient, you know, manage their care, also determine, you know, goals and outcomes of when the patient can be discharged and to set up everything that patient needs for when they go home. And in nursing, it's it's very easy to rush the discharge process of a patient, but I would agree, you know, the discharge phase is just as important as the initial intake of the patient and the initial assessment. Because 
Once the patient leaves to go home, whatever their home is, whether that is an actual, you know, a house or apartment, some homes are homeless shelters, some homes are tents under a bridge, and we have to be ready for whenever that patient goes home, that they are ready, that we set them up for success, so there's a less chance of a readmission back into the hospital, So the discharge process is really important, and I got a big respect for care coordinators and social workers in that role. Yeah, that's really cool. I mean, even just a normal procedure, like if I had a knee replacement, I mean, you you really got to tell somebody what exactly to do once they're out of the hospital. They go home. I mean, that's, yeah, like that education process is so important. Which is so important, which we (laughs) had, this is going to go into our little game of who said it. Okay. Because if you look at the media and things that people say on TV about nurses, they typically get it wrong. So this is going to be a really fun game. So I'm going to read you a quote. Okay. And you're going to have to tell me who said it. Okay. Okay. This is someone on daytime TV. That's your hint. Okay. They said, why does she have a doctor's stethoscope on? Oh, I remember this yeah. one. This was someone from The View. On The View, yeah. Okay, yeah. and she was talking about uh, a Miss America uh, contestant, yep. right, who was doing something, and she's a nurse. Yeah, um, Nurse Kelly, I actually got to meet her. She was Miss Colorado, and she was in the Miss America pageant. And for her talent, she was giving a monologue as a nurse, you know, caring cool. for a patient. And The View was talking about the pageant, and they showed – you know, Nurse Kelly doing her monologue as a talent, and Joy Behar is like, because she did it in scrubs and a stethoscope. Uh-huh. Like, why does she have a doctor's stethoscope on? It, <laughs> it, all the nurses were like, excuse me, excuse Joy? Me? It was Joy Behar. Wow. A lot of backlash. But again, that goes to like, the public doesn't fully understand what nurses do. I mean, right. just even something as basic as not knowing that a nurse, a big part of their role is is taking vitals and being able Assessing to and assess listening, right away yeah. and quickly. Yep. Mind blown. Yep. A doctor set the scope. Who would have thought a doctor set the scope? Uh, And then (laughs) I'm forgetting her name, but this one isn't on my list, but it just came up. Nurses play cards all day. Oh, I remember this. Oh. You were furious. You mean. Oh, what was her name? I was living in Seattle at the time, and she was a Washington representative, a government official, and she just said, nurses sit around and play cards all day? Wow. I'm horrible at cards. Like, and that was like such a big joke that we just sit around and play. We wish we could sit around and play cards all day. But like you said, it goes back to the public not necessarily knowing the role yeah. nurses have. Yeah, it's just a lack of education to the public. And then the last one, who said it? Why would a registered nurse explain this? Why not a dermatologist? A dermatologist? I don't know who said that one. You don't remember who said this? This is, we, I have mentioned it. I was like, oh my gosh, I think I did a TikTok video about it. Dr. Pimple Popper. Oh, yes. Dr. Pimple Popper. She said, why would a registered nurse explain this? So she had shared an article that was written by a nurse explaining like sunburn or something. And she tweeted like, why would a registered nurse explain this? Why not dermatologist? Yeah, it was like a ask a nurse a question kind of a thing on like a website, right? And then she commented about it as if a nurse can't explain a sunburn to someone. (laughs) And this goes back to your point if you had a new replacement and you were being discharged education it's the right. role you know of a nurse to make sure that the patient is educated you know on their diagnosis on their symptoms on what they need to do to be successful at home so right. it's very much within our scope of practice to to educate mm-hmm. patients dr wow. pimple popper joy behar in that Cancel. representative from Cancel. washington can't play in cards all day. If you ever get me cards or a doctor's stethoscope for my birthday, because my birthday is com- my oh, birthday's coming it up. It is Taurus. I knew you were going to sneak that in. Season, baby. It is my birth month. My birthday is May 14th, and I am getting ready. So is everyone. Someone so is everyone. joked that like Tauruses sleep all year, because we do sleep a lot. Yes, you do. Very much me. Yep. Drives him crazy. But when it's our birth month coming up, we are up. Awake. We are awake. We are here for it. Yes, it is a whole thing. I love your color you're wearing today. Thanks. It makes your eyes I'm pop. trying to will like um, summer. Mm. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm just throwing it out into the universe. And it's finally getting your hot. Your eyes are really green. Oh, 
so pretty today. Yours are beautiful brown. Mine are so brown. They're really brown with that dark shirt. You can't shirt. even look at I the people. I love this shirt, by the way. Are you bringing this back? Yes, the shirt is coming back. Nurse Blake merch. Fun. This is my nurse rainbow tee. You can get it on my website at nurseflake.com. It is back. It is in stock. So you could get it on my website and you could rock one of these with me. That's your most popular shirt you've ever had too. Sells out. Yeah. Like immediately. Definitely sells out. That's so fun. It will be up for y'all to check it out and buy it. Cool. And a lot of people are graduating. A lot of people are having birthdays coming Ooh. up. So if you know anyone that got a tourist birthday, uh, you could get them my nurse rainbow tea. Fun. <laughs> but back to jobs. We talked oh, about yes. nursing jobs in the hospital. And there are a lot more, like we said, care coordinators, um, social work. There are also leaders and executives. You got Absolutely. your CNOs. They are making the Fancy. money moves. Fancy. That is a really hard and difficult job because they are trying to balance, you know, advocating for the nurse while also trying to appease the board of directors, mm -hmm. which are not healthcare providers typically. They're right. just like local leaders and business people, you know. Or sometimes so, national leaders for yeah. some of these, the boards of these bigger Nonprofit hospitals are. Oh wait, they're nonprofit. These hospitals mm. are nonprofit. No, they turn a profit. <laughs> they they do just don't pay taxes. <laughs> they, do, they do turn a profit. That's what I'm talking well, about. Well, the idea I think is they they reinvest it mm -hmm. back into the business, not into our break rooms, not into the break rooms. Not put into, a Tavala in there. Oh please, reinvest get a into a Tavala. That's what we want for nurses. That, week. Oh my god, that'd be cool. It's you could have the crappiest break room, but like a fridge full of Tavala meals. Oh my god. That would be You've ridiculous. worked at some companies that they have a whole snack kitchen oh, and yeah. you grab whatever drink. Ever you want. You had beer, you had wine. Yeah. Couldn't do that at the hospital. We had, a, we had like tap. Things were on tap. Really? Yeah. In Washington, that was, that was sick. Maybe they should have that, but it's like after you clock out, you could get to that section of the kitchen. Well, I, I, yeah, I mean, most people They would never it. provide us free snacks. Could you imagine having a keg in the nurse break room? Yeah. <laughs> only after you clock out and sure. you're not coming back tomorrow sure. but okay, um, that's a yeah, bad idea. you've worked at some companies where they give you snacks they don't yeah. they give us nothing well some com some of those tech companies they have full on meals free oh you get to bring yeah. your dogs to work we when we lived in Seattle we worked we lived within the Amazon headquarters and there were about 4,000 Amazon dogs that would go to work with the employees every yep. day yeah like one in ten people brought their dog they would sleep under their desks and just hang out. It was the coolest thing. They could never do that in nursing. Well, I don't know if we could bring our dogs. We could bring Ranger, but maybe mm -hmm. not Zion. She's she, still a little high strung. She is. She needs yeah. just a little more training. Calm down. Just a little more training. Uh, Chill. A little more training. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but there are so many other jobs, you know, within the hospital setting. Like we did say, CNOs and executives. I met some really awesome ones. And I think, you know, it's definitely a hard job to balance, you know, being an advocate for the bedside nurses at the end of the day. Yeah. There are also training, education, and leadership roles. Like if a new grad, you know, is going through a residency program, there are education roles sure. uh, for nurses to have within the hospital setting. And there are so many jobs outside of the hospital setting for nurses like community health, uh, working at your county clinic, working at a school. Yeah. I met some pretty awesome school nurses, and they don't get enough credit because out of all the nursing jobs, they have the highest nurse-to-patient ratios. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, they would. I mean, they 2, are- 2,000 to one. One nurse to <laughs> 2,000. And they honestly have to be ready for anything and everything. You know, these community roles, they don't have access to a whole team of medical professionals like we do within the hospital setting. So they really have to have the knowledge and experience- um, to have the autonomy to be able to, you know, care for any kid or person yeah. at any given moment, you know, based on your knowledge, um, education, and policies and procedures you have to follow. Yeah, that's a big job. That's a huge job. Yeah. And some, like, school nurses, they're split between schools and stuff because not every school has a school nurse. And I feel like every school should definitely have It a should. Nurse. I mean, I would, be, you know, we, we don't have kids, but I would think that the school nurse plays a big role in children's health care in general and possibly a lot of 
parents might even sort of rely a little right. bit on the school's health care. For sure. You know, on that. I think it's nurse. so important. So look at your state and see if they have school nurses in your schools because that is an important and essential role. And it also shows everyone and, and you know, kids growing up in schools, you know, the role that nurses play. Yeah. Which is really I funny. remember my school nurse. I don't remember her name, but she was amazing. The sweetest, the nicest. You used to go with like a tummy ache and have to get pepto bismol. And we have a whole pass, please. And you like try to get an excuse to like go home. And they're like, no. <laughs> Yeah, they're pretty tough. They're pretty tough. <laughs> they are. You can't, I'd be always trying to skip they out on know, exams. I bet they know all the games the kids play. Oh, all, all you, of them. You're they not going to trick them. Everything. Yeah, they've they seen know it all. Everything. <laughs> and then you have, you know, nurses that work in correction facilities. You know, they're fun. We've they met a are, bunch of them. Yeah, yeah. A really important, you know, role yeah. for sure. Especially now, you look at, you know, um, the prison systems um, and. It's sad that it's unfortunate that a lot of individuals with mental health issues, you know, are just end up in prison, you yeah. know, because of that. And it's really, really sad. So, you know, the nurses there to care for those patients, um, which I think is vital and crucial. Um, and then flight nursing, travel nursing. Yes. Can we talk about flight nurses? Yes. That is so fun. That's awesome. They wear some sexy uniforms. Yes. Those jumpsuits. <gasps> oh my god! Oh my goodness! In summer. Texas, they had like a romper thing. Remember, because <laughs> it, it was summer hot. then. It gets so hot. It was like a jumpsuit romper with the helmet. I'm yep. mm, I'm into it. Yeah, that's really that's cool. Sharp. Very autonomous role. Again, you got the pilot in the chopper. You have the uh, the nurse and or a respiratory therapist yep. or a EMT. Right? Are there? No doctor, though, right? Typically, no. Okay. Nope. That's it. It'd be an yeah, that's right, an EMT and a nurse or a respiratory, or a respiratory ther therapist, therapist. That's there, and the pilot. And that was it. Yeah, that's wow. it. And they do both, like hospital to hospital transfers, yep. as well as go to emergency sites like a auto crash or yeah, motor like vehicle that. crash. They go to or like if you're someone goes into the emergency room and they need you know something heart or stroke related and need to go to a specialty hospital, they'll do those you know transfers. My dad That's cool. has been uh, I oh my gosh a RT on the flight team. He was that for a really really long time and absolutely loved it. Yeah, I've always wanted to be a flight nurse. Maybe one day I'll go you back. Should. It takes a lot of training. Yeah, it's definitely not an easy job to get because there's only a few. Right. Within the hospital, and you got hundreds, thousands of nurses. A lot you of know? competition. A lot of competition. So you need to be really experienced, really good, probably know the right people. Because <laughs> <it's, laughs> you know, it is so specialized. But yeah, that's a really cool gig. And then you have, you know, outside the hospital, you have your home health nurses, which I could never be because I would be so distracted, you know, driving through Starbucks and Target oh, and shopping my gosh. in between patients. Yeah. It, yeah, working out of your car. We were basically working yeah. out of your car, and you're just. What's really cool is though you are going to see the patient, you know, where they live, uh, meeting them where they are, and providing whatever needs you know they have. Yeah. Being a care coordinator at the level one trauma center, I would have to set up home health care, uh, PT, you know, rehab. But I never got to see the other side of that. You know, the person right. in their home receiving those services. Yeah, I I, I remember growing up in in Florida. That's a big thing. A lot a lot yeah. of retirees in the small town I grew up in, and sure. home health care was really really important because we had a smaller hospital serving our community, and so the home health nurses were. I mean, they were really on the front line. Yeah, even doing a lot of hospice work. I mean, it was it was pretty. Hospice neat. is. A really um, interesting side of nursing that I have fallen in love with that I really love and appreciate, you know, because just like the L&D nurses, you know, love bringing babies into the world. There's got to be a nurse on the other end of that spectrum, you know, as a patient, you know, does pass. Yeah. And um, I've kind of always been interested in that side of nursing. I volunteered at the hospice house in Greenville, South Carolina. I wanted a job so bad, but I was a I was a you I was did. a new nurse. And they're like, you need some more hospital experience first. But I loved going in and volunteering and, you know, hanging out with the patients and families and Yeah, that nurses. was that was really special and something you were really gravitated towards. Yeah. It's it's a beautiful um it's a beautiful career. Yeah, you know? it really is. My aunt's been a hospice nurse forever, forever, and loves it so much. Yep. And then you have the, uh-oh, the medical device sales reps. 
Are they nurses? They can they be can nurses, be. you yeah. know, coming around selling pure wicks. Doing in services, bringing lunch. Catheters. Oh my gosh, the in services. There's nothing worse than being so busy and having to attend a mandatory in service with no lunch. Ooh, do they do mandatory in service? Yes. Really? Man- but sometimes they'll offer oh. it at numerous times. Okay. But there are mandatory in services for sure. If there's a new product or a new policy or procedure that every nurse needs to see that makes sense. or be trained on. Uh, but <laughs> sometimes they are not nurses, but they can be nurses. Sure. They come in all dressed up, all fancy. We're like in scrub sweating. They look <laughs> so nice and presentable. And, you know, they come in with their product. My mom used to be a medical device sales rep and it, she would always bring like Olive Garden. So it's always like the that's breadsticks the and food. salad. That's like with that um, Alfredo dip. Nice. That is so young. Well, I was in sales for a long time, and I did that with architects and engineers, kind of the same thing. But yeah, it was all about what food you brought. They get good money. Yeah, it is a good... Yeah, if you are a people person, and maybe you don't want to work at the bedside anymore, and you're interested in you know more to that... B to B side. It's it's a fun job. Yeah. It's it's not nursing. However, uh, if, it's nur- it, It's a type of nursing. If, well, In especially of, if yeah. you're if you're training, For right? Sure. If you're doing yeah. training and you're you're teaching. That was what I loved about my role in lighting because I was in a lot of different roles, but I really enjoyed it because I was so involved in the lighting process, even though I wasn't necessarily choosing the lighting, I was influencing right. it as a salesperson sure. because they looked to me as the expert. Yeah. I mean, all these roles are super essential and, you know, nurses need to be in all these different roles. You know, when I'm getting uh, in service on a certain product, I love when there's a nurse that has that experience, you know, that could really help. And they're really passionate about educating and new products because in healthcare, there's always something new out there. Oh, I bet. Always something new. Yeah. And when I work in Houston at the Texas Medical Center, which is a huge biggest in the world medical center. There are like 20 hospitals within like five miles. It's such a cool energy and a vibe. Research was really big, and that's where I really learned um, the the role. Um, that nurses have within the whole research world. So, you know, working with patients um, on on different, you know, medical treatments or procedures and and doing that research and leading that research and managing that patient's progression through that research is a really cool and interesting role. That's really cool. They really like it. It's more like nine to five, you know, Monday through Friday. So some of these roles are more, you know, you work four tens, you work Monday through Friday, nine to five, because some people, the bedside staff nurse schedule, it is all over the place. You could be working holidays and nights and swing shifts and weekends. That necessarily doesn't work for everybody, and that is so okay, and that's so fine. There are so many other roles uh, and schedule types you know, that nurses can have within the field. Um, so many, And I feel like nursing schools just train you to work in the hospital setting, but there are so many community roles, you know, that nurses are, are needed in and essential in. Yeah. I mean, if only a little over 50% are in the hospitals, what about the other 50? Right. You know, sure. I mean, you still need that, all those essential baseline skills, Yeah. but there's nothing necessarily, I wouldn't think that specifically gets you ready to be a corrections nurse, for instance. Right. For sure. Yeah. Or just, even research. Search. Or I mean, even research, or you may have a class in that, but they're still not preparing you. Or to be a school nurse, yeah, you know, so well, all probably on the job training. That is the one thing that I have fallen in love with in the profession of nursing is how many different things you can do. I think it's it's so cool. I mean, not that many professions that you get into have such a wide variety because a lot of the nursing students that we've known throughout the years they think they know what they're going <laughs> to love. Like they're going to love peds or they're going right. to love the OR or they're going to love whatever. And um, and they don't. And then they try something new and they fall in love with that. Right. Which, Which is, is so cool. cool. So I tell nursing students and any nursing students listening, enjoy the nursing school process with an open heart and open mind. Because I even went to school with people that were like, I'm so passionate about peds oncology. And then when they graduated hospice nurse or, you know, they're, they're in a totally different, they're in the ER, they're in trauma. 
And it's just so cool, you know, going through clinicals and stuff that you could just fall in love with something totally different. And throughout your whole journey, I've fallen in love with different career paths within nursing because you have nursing as a profession. And within that, there are hundreds of career paths and routes you can take. You know, so many nurses now, especially, are getting burnt out. And I'm. it's always sad to see those messages of people that are like, I, I can't take it anymore. I'm thinking about leaving the nursing profession altogether. I'm like, no, no, no. We still need awesome nurses. Maybe that role isn't for you. Maybe you were getting burnt out. Try something else. Yeah. You could have 20 different jobs in nursing, you know, and hopefully just fall in love with them all and try new things. Yeah, it's kind of like sky's the limit. It I really mean, it, is. It really is. There's just so many different ways you can approach it. And and to take your degree or your experience or your resume and and get another role or another job that's right. like super cool yep. and new. I mean, I've got to work in so many roles um, from injury prevention to working in critical care and liver transplant as a care coordinator, uh, injury prevention. I feel like it's given me a broader lens of what everything nursing entails. And I look at nursing and patients' needs so much more differently than I did in nursing school and as a new grad. So I definitely appreciate and love all that experience I've had. It would be cool if they had... um a course that was specifically about the roles of nursing. Is that a thing in nursing school typically? No, not really. They really don't talk about that that much, the different roles that Even in that orientation have. or... No, mm. nope. They really, from my perspective in my school, they really prepared you for the hospital setting. You, you did have a community health class. You may have done, you know, very rare, a community clinical, but that's pretty much it. I know we have a nurse con member who works in the UK. And as a new grad there, he got to work in, in the inpatient setting for three months in a clinic in the community for three months with Pete's for three months and another role for three months uh, oh, in his cool. first year as a nurse. So he got to explore different factions of the nursing realm. It was program like that? Yeah. Like, wow, that's like, that's really cool. We need a program like that here. That's that would slick. be so cool. And he absolutely loves it. So if any one of you are interested in being a member to an amazing nursing organization, please join NurseCon. We would love to have you. We're releasing new c &E courses this week. We got a new 30-minute yoga coming out all about happy shoulders. Yep. Um, so if you're looking for c &Es, or just a great community to be a part of, you could join at nursecon.com. And you could also, if you're a member, you get a discount on my merchandise for oh, my fun. rainbow shirt. I love it. <laughs> and then there are many different, um, you could go back to school as a nurse if you want to get an advanced degree and become a nurse practitioner or a CNS, a clinical nurse specialist, or you want to be a CNO one day so you can go back for you know a leadership degree. Um, but I tell people, because I even think nursing students are already pressured to go back to school even when they graduate. Right. You know, pretty much everyone I went to school with eight, nine years ago, they've all kind of gotten their advanced degrees um, now. But we need a lot of bedside nurses. We need staff nurses, too, at the end of the day. So find... Oh my gosh, I just hit oh, this microphone. Oh it's so big. It's so aggressive. These things oh are aggressive. Oh my gosh, maybe that's my chin. These are aggressive. <laughs> Try different things, find what you love. And if you're really passionate and want to go back to school, then then definitely do it. But if you just want to go back to school to get away from bedside, know that there's other roles away from the bedside that you could get into even without going back to school. Right. You can still advance your career without trying yes. to get an advanced degree. You know, I mean, advancing your career oftentimes comes from having new experiences. Yep. You know, so like like you said, being in different roles throughout, you know, your career has really given you a new perspective. And and frankly, I mean, probably makes your resume look good too right. for, for other um, potential opportunities in the future. So, I mean, if that's, uh, we talk to so many nurses who have been in the same role for like 15, 20 years and they absolutely love it and others who are getting burned out. Right. And the, the, the saddest thing is to see a nurse completely leave the profession without exploring what other roles might be out there that might be either just a change of scenery or right. a change of routine. For sure. Or finding a completely new passion. 
And they really don't expose us in that, like you said, in nursing school or even like human resources department should be able to provide nurses with different, you know, leadership. They say climb the clinical ladder. No one really knows what that means. Yeah, what does uh, that mean? I, I was like, what? A clinical ladder? Like, what? I'm not trying to sweat. Like, are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> and then we need more nursing professors out there. Um, I know it's not the highest paying position, but being able to train and educate, you know, the new generation of nurse. I could see myself, I feel like I could see myself in any role. Oh my gosh. But definitely, <laughs> I do say that. It's like my new thing. I would like to be a nursing professor one day. That would be adorable. I think that'd be so fun. You would look, it would, you'd get little glasses. No, I know. professor. Oh, I could. That'd be get so fun. Professor. I'm a nursing professor. Little bow tie. <laughs> Oh my God, that would be a cool role maybe one day. That would be cool. Yeah. You you would really enjoy that. That'd so be special. Our message to all of you is enjoy the journey. Enjoy the process. Find a path with the nursing that you absolutely love. If you're looking to connect with other nurses and find out what else is out there, join nursecon.com. And I want to get into some shout outs. Um, Are you ready? Okay. Selena wants to say she's currently in her first semester of nursing school at JJC in Illinois, and going through this during a pandemic is rough. But watching your videos aw, and listening to your podcast has been a reminder as to why it's always been my dream. You are so admired. Ah, oh, my gosh. And even in our fundamentals class, uh, your videos are used as some nursing homer, uh, humor. Love to you and Brett. With oh, two that, T's. Wait a second. Did we get shouted out? We got shouted out. Oh my we gosh. We got shouted out. I love out. it. <laughs> Joanne, a shout out to my nursing student, uh, Kate, my daughter, who is finishing up her junior year at the University of Maine. What, what? It's been a very challenging year, but she rocked it. I'm so happy that in one short year, she'll be joining me in the profession that I've loved for almost 30 years. Caitlin, I want to send a shout out to Miss Woolfolk for being the best clinical instructor. She was very tough, but has taught me so much. And I will carry her with me throughout my nursing endeavor. Kristen, shout out to my favorite nursing student. Oh, we got favorites here. Wow. <laughs> Jimmy Landy on his 20th birthday. Happy birthday. Uh, you're awesome from your aunt, Kristen. And then Jasmine, I want to shout out to my girls, Jennifer and Kia. They are literally the only reason I made it through pathophysiology. Jen is a full-time mommy and worker, and Kia works full-time, and they still make time for me. They are literally lifesavers. Oh, and also to my hubs, Adams. He is very un Go supportive, Adam. and he may not understand what it's like to be a nursing student, but he's always there to tell me how proud he is and excited he is to see her succeed. Aww, I, I love, love that. that. Thank you all for your shout outs. If you want to submit a shout out, you could do that on my website at nurseblake.com. And to all the nurses out there, no matter what nurse you are, know that you are essential. There can sometimes be a lot of competition within nursing. Like I'm on this floor. I do this. I do that. But all of us together make the nursing profession what it is. And at the end of the day, we are there to care for patients and save lives. So thank you all so much for listening. You could download this podcast wherever podcasts are downloadable if you are listening on apple please give us a five-star rating we love reading your reviews and you could also watch and subscribe to my youtube channel and brett thanks for being here for another episode oh thanks for having me babe <laughs> love you everyone till next time bye bye